when not to become a data analyst, right? And there are five or six points. If you don't qualify or intend to build these skills, mm -hmm. then you will not end up becoming a data analyst that will pay you eventually three to four years down the line or five years down. The line. Hey guys, I have not made this video to discourage you to become a data analyst. But look at it from this perspective. If you don't have solutions or strategy to resolve these factors, then you're likely to get stuck in a rut that is not allowing you to move forward and get a job in data science. So look at this video in terms of something that is going to aid you to become a data analyst. But before we go there, hey, my name is Kunal Lank. I'm the founder of Data Science Masterminds and I'm on a mission to help you learn and apply data science effectively so that you can grow in your career. So if you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and the bell notification if you think this video helped you to achieve your goals. Let's get started. So the first thing is going to be not being a not being a self learner. So the, how, why not being a self uh, learner? When learning SQL or Excel or Tableau or Power, you will require um, you know you will require to do a lot of debugging and figuring out. At one point of time, you will not be in a point where you will remember that material that you went through. Right. And then you're skimming through hundreds of different techniques and finding out what technique to be using. Although you, uh, the, the way we operate in these, these terms is that, Hey, we sort of create a indexing of knowledge. That means we acquire knowledge before we actually go, are going to require to that. But when you acquire knowledge, you can't passively acquire knowledge. You have to actively acquire knowledge such that when you need it, you'll be able to apply that. knowledge. That is what is called a self learner, right? And so the solution for this is to build a learning discipline irrespective of which stage of career you are. No matter where you go, that is the thing you will be uh, working on. Notice, note that any working professional, the people that you're competing against or the job that you are working on, these are the people that are working six to uh, 12 hours daily, right? So unless you are able to give that sort of hours to, 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 you know, um, you know, look at, to compete with that people who is having experience, uh, then, you know, unless you're able to put in that same level of time, you will not be able to compete with. Them, okay. And so not be, not a self learner is, is going to be one of the key deterrents of you not becoming a data analyst and hence a not data, a data scientist. So that's the first point. Next point is hey, learning on your own. Now, when you work for different organization, you may need to learn new set of tools that you already know. Now, when you are making a job switch also the same rules apply. You are using a different set of tools. When you get into data analysis, you will use a different set of tools. It's just that the transition should you, you should be acquainted with. Okay. Now the, the easiest solution, the easiest solution for this kind of an environment is to learn on your own and especially, you know, complete projects, right? Especially complete projects. That is the sure shot way of you being able to just level up your own game and you're learning on your, right. And I'll tell you what, how do you learn on your own? And there are some techniques that are there, right. But that will be for another time. But you know, you, you know that you have to start learning on your own, right. You cannot rely on somebody teaching you. So this to go hand in hand, right. So you have, if you're not a self learner, you can't learn on your own. Like it's both the same point actually, but there is a deeper meaning for both of them. Now, one of the things as a data analyst uh, we face is, uh, you know, there are people, there are certain people who get frustrated very easily when something is not happening, right? And, uh, you know, we have, we have worked with students and there are students who easily get frustrated, like once a pivot table is not working or a SQL query is not, working, right? So if, if you get into that mode easily, you are not going to be able to solve problems, right? So if you get frustrated when something doesn't work, then you will only delay the problem you're trying to solve, right? You'll not be able to solve it as effectively. The solution here then is to build resi resilience to failures and try out all the options through Google search. Or sometimes you sit it down, get up in the morning and try to resolve it again, 
that persistence is what is required. Got it? Next, hate manual work, right? Now we have spoke about this in length, right? So you know the, how manual work looks like yeah. and you know now how automation looks like, yeah. right? Yeah. These are, you, you, those people who understand uh, automation, they get this, that hey, this manual work is something that you do not have to hate. In fact, what you want to do is when you're doing manual work, you want to document what are the manual steps that you, um, that are required to get that job done. Right. And then you have tools and technology to help you automate, automate that steps. Right. That is a mindset that you want to build. Okay. So if end, uh, if you end up doing complicated and lengthy tasks manually every time, then you're, you're going to lose a lot of hours getting a task done. And hence a frustration that, Hey, that the data analyst job is not something that I was looking for. Right? This is more hours than I expected to work. Right. It's because you don't have that automation mindset, right? So you build an automation thinking. It saves tons of time on manual uh, repetitive tasks. And this is something you will find that no course provides this kind of a thing. Okay. So it begins with the idea. We are going to see the idea that, Hey, any manual task, any manual task in the data analysis, analysis domain, data science domain can be automated, right? And that is where logical thinking comes in, right? So you have problem solving, learning on your own is a problem. So getting frustrated is your problem solving, right? This is where, um, you know, you do logical thinking, right? And then you're going to come into another, another skill that is, um, communication and then again, critical thinking also, right? So here, here's what you'll, you'll be doing uh, and you can't become a data analyst if you are not working with other people. Okay. Now, unfortunately, none of these courses cover this kind of a, a scenario. At best, you will be doing a capstone project with your team. Uh, and you'll be time bound and you'll not really get time to fully experience how is it to work with a team member, right? So working with a team member typically involves you taking guidance from them. They guiding you in certain places where you're stuck. You do weekly commitments to meet them often to be able to solve a common problem. And end of the day, end of the few weeks, you both have a solution to a project you've done, right? Any platforms like Kaggle already provide teamwork built into the system. And so you'll realize that a lot of iterations are required to solve machine learning problem statements and having a team member doing certain types of iterations, you doing certain types of iteration, and then you finally combined your uh, tasks that is going to accelerate the way you solve problems and think about the problem. Statements. Okay. That's, that's what we call a mastermind. One mind is, is, can do a lot, but two minds can do exponentially even better. Okay. So that's it. Data analysts need to learn how to communicate with others, bring out insights that help our business and that to all through communication. Okay. So one of our objectives with data science masterminds, you will note is that, uh, you are, you, you know, as a learner, you're going to now start collaborating with other learners and do even much more complex projects. Right. And even do much more trials and that all with, with certain objectives in mind and communications and dealing with their issues. And you are dealing with your issues together. You're solving problems because remember your team members that are, that you're competing again, who have jobs are already working in teams. They, whether they like it or not, they're working in teams. So why not build that skill and be ready as good as they are. Okay. Last one is not building a domain knowledge. Okay. So, you know, um, so that there, there are some insider jokes within the business world, right? And, um, so basically if you work in a certain domain, you will know about the metrics. There is that inherent tacit knowledge that comes about when you work in a do domain uh, knowledge, right? It, and domain knowledge typically begins with self-awareness for, for yourself. You should be able to know things like 
uh, how often you're you're getting up early on the right time and doing the right things and um, learning enough. Um, what happens when you learn? Uh, when what happens when you get bored? When you need break? Right? You start introspecting a lot of things within yourself. Just like you have a lot of things to introspect, all the businesses, right, function with metrics and numbers. How did my day sales do today? Uh, hey, we did yesterday sales very nice, uh, but today it's not happening, right? So all of this domain knowledge, when you build a domain knowledge, you're able to, uh, you know, go in depth about that particular topic and know the metrics. So whenever you are coming to an interview, right? Let's say you picked out e-commerce as a domain, right? When you go to Flipkart or you go to Amazon, the the shopping cart, the e-commerce website part of the division there, right? you will speak the same language, right? You will know what add to cart is, what is a bounce rate, what is um, you know a recommendation engine. If a project, if a person buys something, how do I recommend projects, uh, products to him, right? Uh, uh, what functionalities are added within the e-commerce site to ensure the customer experience is not bad enough, right? When you know all of this, right? and you approach for the job, you will be setting yourself apart from all those technical people who know only techniques, right? And that puts you in a very natural position to take leadership positions because you understand the domain properly, right? SQL, anybody can write, Excel, anybody can do it. But domain knowledge, trust me, is the hardest thing to acquire, okay? And so you start acquiring this knowledge, the technical skills, that is your programming and technical skills, with maths and statistics on the other side and domain knowledge on the other side, with balancing three of these things, you will see that, you know, this will, you know, uh, become an advantage to you, right? And so uh, the, the solution is here to commit to learning to a domain and most people fail to commit to a domain. Remember that you don't need to, uh, you know, uh, you know, commit to just one domain. You can go in, commit to a domain, learn all about it and go repeat the process for another domain in the same way, right? And you can do multiple domains, the ones that interest you and you'll see that you will be on your way to become a data analyst. So if any of them is not something that you like from these points, then you're going to have that barrier, right? That is going to always be hindering you to get into data science, data science or get a data analyst job. And the alternate, what's the alternate is, hey, if not data analysis, what else can you do? That's a question that you will explore, but that is uh, that we will do on another time.